Do you have your favorite pair of PJs that you just love, but you can't find a replacement pair? Why not make your own? Using your favorite pair as a pattern. Come on! I'll show you how easy it is to duplicate your favorite pair. Now that it's cold, it's time to pull out your favorite pajamas. And these are my favorite, and I want to make another pair just like them. I found a piece of fabric. Uh, it's a cotton fabric. I folded the pants, and I've got the back side on the top, and the front is on the inside. So I'm just going to lay this down. I'm going to take the side seam of the back, and I'm going to go ahead and just put a pin in it and just pin it down on the side. And I'm going to do this right up to the elastic. Because I want this to stay nice and straight. And you can do that all the way down. But I'm just going to do it for here. Right here for now. When I get to the crotch section. I'm going to go ahead and pin the crotch section down as well. Onto the existing new fabric. So here is my line for my crotch. And as you see it's rolling back over here. So I'm going to take my elastic. And I'm going to stretch my elastic. And when I stretch my elastic. We can see that it comes right here. So I'm going to put a pin mark right there. Because, like I said, once the elastic has been stretched and I have the seam allowance for the back seam, and when I pull it out, that's where it meets. It's right there. So I'm going to pin the rest of the crotch down. So I'm going to pin the, the pajamas down to the new fabric all the way down. I'm just going to leave a one inch seam allowance because I want these a little more baggier than the one than than this pair. So I'm using my, my chalk pencil. I'm, I put in a orange color and I'm just going to, to mark one inch all the way down till I get down to the hem. Here I'm working with the crotch. So I'm going to take... Um, my chalk pen and I'm going to also mark one inch for the crotch. So I'm going to come out here an inch as well and then I'm going to take this inch and I'm just going to draw my line down because I can see my crotch area now coming into play. So now that I've got the crotch area marked I left an inch at the top because that's where my elastic is going to go. So this portion I'm not going to even cut it at all. But as far as the side seam goes I'm also going to do the same thing. I'm going to allow a one inch seam allowance and I'm going to mark this all the way down. Now my markings are done so I'm going to move my pajamas out of the way and I'm going to go ahead and just cut them out. Now when I get to my hem, I made my hem about two inches longer because these were a little short on me and I want them kind of long. Now that the front, the back has been cut, now we're working on the front. And I wanted you to see, as you can see, see how much higher the back is. The back is about inch and a half to two inches higher than the front. Now we've got our pieces cut out. And you can mark them if you want. But I'll tell you the way, the reason I'm not marking mine is because the way you can tell the difference between the front and the back is that the back crotch is much longer than the front. So what you want to do now is you want to take your pants and you want to lay a back on top of the front right sides together. So there's the front and there's the back. So we're going to put them on top of each other right sides together. And what you're going to do first is we're going to sew up the side seams first and then we're going to go and sew up the inside leg. So we're sewing the sides and the inside leg first. When I'm sewing pants, I like to sew the center leg first, the center, you know, the inside leg. So I'm putting the seams together, the fabric pieces together, the front and the back, and I'm going to sew my 5 8 inch seam allowance. I sewed the inside of the leg and then I went back and I serged the edges so that it wouldn't have all the extra fabric that would start to fray over time. So now what you want to do is sew up the sides. To sew the pants together on the sides, 
Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is that you'll notice that the front and the back crotch look totally different. You even notice that the back is longer than the front. That's perfectly normal. Once you get ready to attach the back to the front, you're going to notice that the back fabric is a lot longer than the front. So what you want to do is start at the hem and pin the hems together so that way you know the hem matches up the front and the back. And then as you go up, you want to ease it. And what I mean by ease, you can see there's a little bit more fabric on the back than there is on the front. Because when you sew that, see if I pull that together, it just gathers it up. And that's because our back sides are larger than our front sides when it comes to, um, you know, making pants. So you want to make sure that you've got this um, eased in evenly. And when you go to sew it, it's going to, the feed dolls are going to grab that extra fabric and make it nice and straight. So when sewing the back, I'll start on one piece. You'll start at the hem. And the other piece, or the other side of the pant, you'll start at the waist. Because you always want the back on the bottom. So on this one, I'm starting at the top, where all the gathers are. And you're just going to simply sew. And like I said, as you sew, pull the fabric kind of taut and let the feed dogs do their job. Now I have the front and the back sewn together at the side as well. So I wanted you to see what I meant by easing. This is the front side and as you can see the seam is nice and straight and it's nice and flat. But when you flip it over because you allow the feed dogs to gather the underneath and you put it with the back side down, you notice that you're getting a little bit of gathers. But you notice that your stitch is still straight. Nothing is puckered. It's just this portion of the fabric, the seam allowance, has a little bit of gather on it. That's what you want. And you're going to end up being able to press this out and that gives you a little bit more extra fabric on the back than you do on the front. So I'm going to go ahead and serge up my side seams and then I'm going to come back and show you how we do the crotch. Okay, I pressed the seams flat. So I wanted you to see this is that back side. Once it was pressed, as you can see, you don't see any of those puckers that you saw earlier when we um, finished sewing that side. And now you see once you press it, all those puckers lay nice and flat. That's the beauty of an ease. So now we got to sew the crotch. So you're going to take one pant leg and you're going to turn it on the right side. So you're going to take um, the other pant leg and you're going to take the right side pant leg and insert it inside of the one that's on the wrong side. So insert it all the way down and just pull it out from the bottom. When you insert it down like that, now you can come in and take the right side of both of them and you can pin the crotch seam allowances together. And this will ensure that your crotch will be inserted. You'll be able to sew your crotch nice and neat without any problems. So we're going to pin this all the way around. And then you, I'm going to sew it. And then after I sew it, I'm going to serge it. And then I'll show you how we finish them up. The crotch has been sewn together. Here is the front crotch. And this is the back. And when I sew them together, I let the seam of one fall one direction. And the seam of the other fall the other direction. And that just depends on which way you're sewing. It doesn't matter which one falls front or back. It doesn't matter. Just make sure they're not falling the same, but they fall opposite each other. That way you don't have any extra bulk in the crotch area and it'll be uncomfortable. So now if you were to take the crotch seam and fold it right there at the seam and try to line these up, you will notice that there is a considerable amount of difference between the front and the back. That's perfectly fine. That's exactly what you want. The crotch back should be a lot longer than the crotch front. Turn our pants to the right side. Okay, now that our pajamas are turned on the right side, now it's time to attach the elastic. So there's two ways you could do the elastic. You could do a single turn in and then a fold over your elastic and then stitch that down and insert the elastic. Or you can serge the top 
and then do the elastic like this with one fold. So I'm going to go and serge the top or finish off. If you don't have a serger, you can finish off the top by turning it down and doing a tiny, tiny, tiny little stitch. And then that way when you fold it down, everything will stay nice and neat. I've searched the top of my pajamas and I wanted you to see the difference. You see the, the top front is a lot shorter or lower than the back. It's actually about two inches shorter. And that's exactly what you want because our back side is normally larger than our front side. So now we're ready to put the elastic in. I pre-cut my elastic to the waist length. I'm going to start sewing from the back side and I'm going to take my elastic and I'm just going to fold the fabric over it. You can actually see my little markings and that's okay. I'm going to fold it over and as I sew the elastic, I can actually feel where the elastic is. So I'm just going to keep wrapping the fabric over the elastic and sewing. And you'll do this all the way around and I'll show you what we do when we get to the end when you run out of elastic. Now I've come to a spot where I'm about to run out of elastic, so I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to take my elastic, fold it over, and I'm going to put a pin in it. And then I'm going to leave my needle down, lift up my presser foot. I'm going to take my elastic and I'm going to pull. And by pulling it, it gives me more room to complete sewing the rest of the elastic. I finished sewing in the elastic. So what I'm going to do now, you want to make very sure that your elastic is all facing the same way that it's not twisted. So I'm going to take it and lay it on top of each other like this and I'm going to pull out on both sides because I need to sew my elastics together. I'm going to overlap the two pieces of elastic about an inch and I'm going to use a medium to a wide zigzag stitch over the two pieces. Now this is going to allow the elastic to lay flat and very smooth inside the waistband. And when I zigzag, I zigzagged on both sides so that way, see it doesn't come, un come undone. Now you're going to take your pajamas and just spread out your elastic so that it's stretched all the way around. So now you go back to your machine and you'll simply take your needle and put it down in a spot where you've already sewn and you're going to stretch your waistband so that the fabric lays nice and flat and you'll simply sew that. And now you're done with inserting your elastic. So now our pants are pretty much done with the exception of the hem. So now you'll go down to the bottom and we're going to do the hem. And because I allowed extra fabric, I'm going to do a one inch turn up twice. So I'm just going to turn up once like this, the one inch, and I'm going to turn up again. And that gives me a double fold and it also gives us a nice thick hem at the bottom that the pant will hang or your pajamas will hang nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that now. Now my pajamas are done and you're just going to simply press the hem flat so that, you know, it looks nice and neat. Press the sides and then you're ready to wear them. So I hope this video has been helpful on how to take your favorite pair of pajamas and turn them into a new favorite. So I hope you try this. Happy sewing!